Harry popped the tab on a beer, plopped down on his couch, threw his bare feet up on the coffee table, with beer in one hand and TV remote in the other, set out to enjoy an evening at home. He found a game he thought might be interesting, dropped the remote and pulled his long blonde hair out from behind his back and relaxed. After a while he crushed the beer can and started looking for something else to watch. He was bored but didn't have anything better to do. His phone chirped signaling a message coming in. Perhaps something to save him from a long night of boredom. Andy, what are you up to? Andy, a friend. Better than nothing though, maybe she would have something for him to do. Harry, nothing. You? Andy, working on a new idea. Interested in helping? Harry, now? Andy, no, got things to work out, probably next weekend. Andy was an artist and came up with some pretty odd ideas. She wasn't married to any particular medium. One time it would be paint, another sculpting clay, then pencil. One just never knew. She probably wanted help moving some huge piece of something. Harry, sure, no plans. Need something moved? Harry watched as the three dots appeared and disappeared a couple times before a reply came back. Andy, don't want to say now. Plan on most of the day Saturday. Okay? Most of the day? Harry muttered. What the hell else do I have to do? Okay, he typed back. The conversation was over, so he tossed the phone aside. Andy, he mused. They had hooked up once a few months back. She had made it clear she was too busy with her work to be trying to keep up with a boyfriend. Too bad, though. Andy was really pretty, long black hair, long legs too. Most guys paid as much attention to her as girls did to him though. She was always thinking of her next project, and she didn't have much in the breasts department. Fine with him though, he liked being around her. Now he wondered what she had in mind for her project. Maybe she wanted him to model? Perhaps nude? He snickered at the thought. He knew he wasn't that much to look at, not tall, not muscular, rather skinny actually. Friday rolled around and his phone signaled another message. Andy, still good for tomorrow? Harry, sure. Anything special I need? Andy, nope, I've got everything. Harry, time? Andy, 10 too early? Harry, I'll be there. Just before 10 a.m. Harry walked up to the door of the bungalow Andy called both home and her workshop. It looked very respectable from the front though the backyard was usually a collection of her various projects in different states of completeness. He knocked. The door opened and Harry stared. Wow. Andy stood there dressed all in white, heels, hose, short, pleated skirt, sheer blouse, only the cuffs and collar were solid, and a bra. Hi, Harry. Andy pushed open the screen door. Like the look? Absolutely. Harry stepped inside. So, what's today's project? I doubt you plan on painting or sculpting in that outfit. You're right. She moved into a small living area. Would you like something to drink? It's 10 a.m. Harry frowned. Oh, right, Andy nodded. Perhaps I should tell you what I have in mind first. She hesitated. Okay, so I want to call it Reflections and Deceptions. It is going to be a photography piece. Okay, Harry answered. So, you need me to man the camera? Um, no. Andy eyed him up and down. I want you in the pictures with me. I thought of you for several reasons, but one is your long blonde hair. It'll make a good contrast to mine. Okay, Harry nodded. In the pictures, he thought, didn't see that coming. Okay, Andy looked around, well, come with me. She led Harry through the little house to her bedroom. Harry looked at the bed and saw black clothes arrayed on the bed. At first, he was confused, then he began to get an idea of what she had in mind. Oh, wait a minute. He backed up a couple steps toward the bedroom door. Are you suggesting, I mean, do you really think, um, no, I can't do this, he stammered. Where the hell did you get an idea like this? And what made you think I would do it? Well, Andy walked to the bed and picked up the black pleated skirt. I went shopping last week and stumbled across these two outfits. 
I thought a photo shoot, something contrasting the dark and the light. But something else was needed. Then I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race the other night and thinking how fabulous those guys looked dressed up as girls. Things started coming together in my head. I thought of you. Your height, your build, your long hair. It would be perfect. I'll do your makeup to make you look like one of the girls, but not over the top drag queen. That is the deception part. I can't do this, Andy. Harry slashed his hand through the air. People will see this, and I have enough troubles without putting on a skirt. Are you sure? Andy tossed the skirt back on the bed. I think it will be a really incredible piece of art, and you might have a little bit of fun with it. Other people. Harry started. Screw other people. Andy snapped. If I worried about other people I'd be working at Walmart or Target, or maybe as a secretary for some asshole somewhere. I know people talk about me and my crazy art, but I am happy being who I am doing what I want. Is everything so perfect in your life that you can't take a bit of a chance and see if my vision is as good as I think? Harry just stared for a second. His head was spinning trying to deal with the idea she felt he would go for this ludicrous idea and then putting it in such a way that he felt confused about why he shouldn't do it. Want that drink? Andy asked after a few moments of silence. She left the room in answer to Harry's nod. Harry was still standing in the same spot when she returned and handed him a glass of orange juice. Harry took a sip and realized there was a lot more vodka in it than orange juice. That jolted him back to reality. So, no, my life isn't perfect. Harry stared at the clothes on the bed. But that doesn't mean I would just do anything. And other people, well, I don't have many that I call friends, but... He let it drift off. He didn't know what to say about that. Am I one? A friend? Andy whispered. Harry nodded. Look, Andy sat on the bed. I really want this, and I want the other person to be you because I like you. More than that, I trust you. I don't think you talk about me behind my back, and I can't say that about many people. I won't force you though. Not that I could anyway. But even if I could, I want you to do it because you want to help me by your own choice. Harry looked at her for a moment. She was manipulating him, he was sure. Playing on his nature to want to help and be a good guy. The worst part was that even though he knew what she was doing he could also feel himself giving in. He took another big swallow of the screwdriver in his hand. Fine, he muttered. Really? Andy's face lit up as she stood. Yeah, Harry nodded. But, will you promise me that if I look at the pictures and don't like what I see you'll not try and show them, or publish them or whatever it is that you would do to make them public? Sure, I can agree to that, Andy grinned, because I know they are going to be fabulous. So, first thing, get naked. Huh? Harry answered. What? I've seen you naked before, Andy flipped her hand, I want to see if we need to shave anything. I do remember you don't have a lot of body hair, but I want you very bare. Harry started to protest but knew he was going to lose before he even opened his mouth. He agreed to do it, now he just had to follow through. Totally naked? Every stitch, Andy answered as she sat back on the bed again. Harry peeled off all his clothes and watched as Andy inspected his body. He followed her to the bathroom where she proceeded to shave off the little hair he had. Then back to the bedroom. Okay, she started, first, a garter belt. She wrapped the lacy garment around his waist and adjusted it, the garters dangled against his thighs. Now, stockings. She picked up a sheer black stocking. Sit on the bed, she instructed. She gathered the stocking on her fingers. Now, give me your foot. She slipped the hose onto his toes and began working it up his leg slowly working it until at last the wide lace band was at the top of his thigh. Watch. She worked the clasp onto the stocking. You do the other one. Harry's hands were shaking a bit as he gathered the stocking onto his fingers the way Andy had. Try to keep it straight, Andy instructed. You don't want it twisted on your leg. Harry slipped it on his toes and worked it up his leg until the lacy band was the same as his other leg. He struggled a bit getting the clasp on but finally got it attached. 
He ran his hands back up his leg making sure the stocking was settled. He shivered at the feel. Stand up and I'll get the back ones. Andy was all business now. Check the front ones to be sure they are tight. She attached the rear garters and adjusted them then checked the front ones he had finished. Good, how do they feel? Nice. Harry's voice shook as he answered. He couldn't hide the fact that he was enjoying this now. It surprised him that he was. He thought doing this would make him feel emasculated. And even though Andy was ignoring it, he knew there was no way she could miss how he was truly feeling about it. Okay. Andy picked up a couple items. The thong leaves fewer lines, but you don't need to worry about that with the skirt you will be wearing, it is satin and solid, it might not be wide enough to keep your balls in check though. The panty is cut high with a lacy front and sheer back but will probably keep everything nice and tight. May just depend on if you think you could be comfortable in a thong. Some folks don't like the feeling of it splitting their cheeks. Um. Harry looked at the two. What are you wearing? Oh, Andy laughed. I have a thong. She lifted her skirt and showed her bare butt, then turned so he could see the lacy front and the dark patch of hair under it. The lacy thing would have been too small in the front for you so we couldn't wear matching underwear, but I don't intend on doing a lingerie shoot. Okay, I guess the panty then. Harry took it from her and stepped into it. He slipped it up his legs and got it into place with a little struggle, it was tight. At first, he thought that at least his cock wasn't standing out there any longer, but the lacy front did little to hide it. It was just held against his body now. Terrific! Andy grinned. Bra next. She held up the bra for him to slide his arms through, then stepped behind him and fastened it. These are breast forms to fill them out. She slipped a couple flesh-colored blobs into the bra. Harry felt the weight pull a bit at his shoulders, not much, she seemed to have chosen to make his breasts about the same size as her own. He tried taking a deep breath to see how the bra restricted him, it provided some resistance, but not a lot. Okay. Before you get the rest of your clothes on, we are going to do your makeup, Andy told him. You ready? If I said no now, would it make a difference? Harry asked. Andy laughed. Probably a bit late to change your mind now, but I could get you another drink. Harry thought about it for a minute. No, I don't want to be drunk and unable to do what you need after going through all this. Let's put my face on. She sat him down where he was in the light and went to spreading goo on his face and brushing on powders and all sorts of things he just couldn't keep up with. She added false eyelashes and finally painted his lips. Wow, Andy stepped back and looked him over, you look even better than I imagined. Let me do a little with your hair and then we can finish getting you dressed. Harry swallowed nervously and avoided biting his lip. He waited while Andy brushed, curled and sprayed his hair. Won't putting the shirt on mess up my hair? Should I have put it on first? No, Ando answered as she finished a couple little touches. But you do still need to be careful, so you don't get makeup on the blouse. As you can see it is so sheer that if you get anything on the inside it will show right through. Okay, you ready? Harry sighed. I suppose so, too far to turn back now. He went to the bed and picked up the sheer black blouse. He worked his arms through the sleeves, the cuffs were tight, but he managed to get his hands through. He carefully pulled the blouse over his head being careful not to let it touch his face. He finally got it settled down his body. He reached back and pulled the rest of his hair out of the collar. Andy immediately began fluffing it and arranging it. Okay, now your skirt. Andy unzipped the skirt and handed it to him. Zipper will be on the left side. Harry looked to see if she was teasing him, but she appeared to be all business. He took it, stepped into it, and pulled it up to his waist. It didn't feel like he was putting anything on until he pulled the waistband into his place, and it slid along the panty covering his butt. He pulled the zipper up and wondered if it was right. How's it feel? Andy asked. I can hardly tell I am wearing it. Harry reached down and pressed it against his legs. Mainly I feel the panty and the stockings. Yeah, that skirt isn't tight, so you don't feel it much except when you walk or sit, Andy explained. There are just a couple things left, shoes and nails. Nails? 
Harry looked at his fingers. Yeah, I got some fake nails for you because I was pretty certain you wouldn't want me painting yours, and I can see you don't have much nail to paint. You really shouldn't bite your nails, Andy snickered. But let's put your shoes on first so you can start getting used to them. Harry watches as she produced a pair of black high-heeled shoes. He swallowed looking at the heel trying to imagine walking on something that small. He took them from her and bent to slip them on his feet. They were a bit tight, but the stockings allowed his feet to slip in. He placed his feet on the floor and tested the balance. When you get up to walk, be sure to start with shorter steps, Andy cautioned him. They are only two inches, but they are going to be a lot different than anything you've worn before. At least, so far as I know. Trust me, everything I have on is a first time, Harry told her. He stood up carefully putting all his weight on the balls of his feet and then slowly letting himself settle back onto the heels. He moved his right foot a few inches forward and shifted. His ankle wobbled but he was able to recover. He took another step, a little better but still wobbly. His confidence grew as he took more steps. Very good, Andy offered her praise, but don't get too overconfident, even girls who spend a lot of time on heels can have a problem on occasion. Now, follow me and I'll get your nails on. Then we can talk about eating if you like, it is almost noon. Noon? I didn't realize it has taken us that long. Harry followed her back out into the living area. It would be quicker if you did this regularly, maybe about half the time. It took me almost an hour getting dressed this morning. Sit here at the table. Harry walked to the table and became aware of the skirt tapping lightly against the back of his thighs as he moved. He sat, crossed his legs and felt along the hem of his skirt to see if it had ridden up. Nicely done. Andy took a seat near him. I think I could turn you into a girl in no time. One thing I was afraid of, because I do know you are a guy, is that you might keep acting like a guy in a skirt instead of a girl. It won't matter once we get in position for the pictures, but I think it will help the mindset if you are acting like a girl. I will do my best. Harry watched as Andy applied one false nail after another. They were already painted the same deep red shade as the lipstick he wore. I've been watching girls a long time, I think I can fake it for a few hours. I do have a question though, these blouses are so see-through. I mean it is almost like not having one on and just walking around in a bra. Why? Well, Andy hesitated as she placed one of the nails, it is a choice. A lot of women might wear a camisole under the blouse so just the shoulders and arms are visible. Others might choose to wear a bra with lacy accents, or one that shows more skin. I chose this look because of the sexiness of a visible bra and the conflict of modesty by using a full coverage bra that could almost be a swimsuit top. Andy finished, be careful with those nails on your stockings, you don't want to get a run. So, ready for a salad for lunch? Don't want anything too heavy. Harry nodded and examined his hands. Then he couldn't help but examine himself running his hands down his blouse, over his breasts, over his skirt and onto his thigh. He couldn't believe the feeling, or the vision of his hands with long red nails. He quickly put his hands on the table when he heard Andy returning from the kitchen with lunch. That was good, thank you. Harry pushed his empty plate away. Oh, please, it was the least I could do with you doing all this for me. Andy collected the plates and took them to the kitchen. Harry watched her skirt flip back and forth as she left and wondered if he looked anywhere near as good when he walked. Oh, Andy, I think I need to use the bathroom. Well, you know where it is, she called back. Just remember to be careful with those nails, and you might be better off sitting in case you had a doubt. Harry got up and walked to the bathroom, wondering if there was a way to watch himself walk. It also occurred to him that he hadn't seen himself yet but there would be mirrors in the bathroom. He flipped on the light, closed the door and froze. On the back of the door was a full-length mirror and he got a complete look at himself. He leaned closer to examine his face. Somehow Andy had subtly altered the contour of his face making it appear more feminine. Exactly how it was different he couldn't quite put his finger on. He did notice his lips looked blotchy so his lipstick needed repair after eating lunch, but he was certain Andy would address it before they got started. 
he checked on the rest of his body and felt his waist was probably a bit too thick, a funny thing for him to think of for himself, but the skirt flared out making it appear that his waist was thinner. He turned and opened the lid on the toilet, reached under his skirt and after sticking himself with a long nail, managed to pull his panty down to his ankles. He held his skirt as he sat. Now he had a new problem. He closed his eyes and started thinking about anything other than how he was dressed. It took a minute, but he finally started relaxing to the point of being able to pee. When he finished, he stood and pulled his panty back up and checked to make sure his skirt wasn't hung up on it. He flushed, did another quick inspection in the mirror and went back to join Andy. Everything okay? Andy asked. Everything is great, Harry answered. I think my lipstick needs some touching up though. Yeah, I just did mine, come over here. She picked up a tube from the table. Can I ask you something? Harry stopped and let Andy apply the lipstick. Of course. She touched him up. Do you think I make a better girl than Guy? He almost whispered. Andy stopped and looked at him. In truth, I think you make a wonderful person whether you are dressed like a guy or a girl and that is the best anyone can hope for. Now, if you like the way you look and want to continue that, that is up to you. If you don't and today is the first and last time you do it, fine. Or maybe something in between. Any which way you choose, I am going to be forever grateful and will always be your friend. Harry frowned. He wasn't sure he got an answer. Or the answer she gave him was that it didn't matter what she thought, it was only what he thought. Okay, well, what have you got in mind? Andy moved to another part of the room and began unrolling a green carpet, then pulled a green movie screen up nearly to the ceiling. Harry was impressed that she moved so smoothly on her heels and so gracefully in that skirt. You have a green screen? Harry shook his head. Yeah, found these cheap at an estate sale some time ago, she explained. Thought something might come up that I would want to use it and here we are. She then set up a digital camera on a tripod at the other end of the room. Okay, come over here because now the fun begins, Andy grinned. Harry walked over and stood on the green carpet and allowed Andy to pose him. Then she would take a pose in exactly a mirror image to his. She worked them through several poses, brought on a couple chairs painted the same green and worked through several more poses. Almost two hours later she had them stand for one last pose. They stood facing each other, toes touching, hands closest to the camera pressed palm to palm. Lips lightly touching. There, Andy nodded. I think that will give me enough to work with. I'd hate to have to ask you to come back and go through all this again. Do you want to go clean up? Change clothes? I can help get the makeup off. Um, Harry looked around, actually, I'm okay right now. Oh. Andy grinned. Works for me. I like this, I don't have any real girlfriends. Andy pulled the memory card from the camera and pulled her laptop out and set it on the table. She inserted the card, powered it up. Come over and take a look. She waved to Harry. I'll give you an idea of what I want to do, though I'll probably be playing with this for weeks, maybe months, before I get totally settled on the final look. Harry pulled a chair up where he could see the screen, sat, crossed his legs and checked his skirt. He crossed his hands laying them on his lap. Andy saw him do all this out the corner of her eye but gave no indication except a small smile. She started tapping away at the keys calling up different images of them and setting them to different backgrounds, forests, gardens, cityscapes, pools, lakes. She'd look at something for a moment and move on. Sorry. She sat back. This part is going to get boring for you because I will just keep doing that until one of the combinations speaks to me. No, Harry objected, that's fine. I think it is amazing how your mind works on this stuff. You have so many different backgrounds to apply I can see it will take a while. I just didn't want to say anything to interrupt your thought process. The only thing I think might limit you is that we are always in the same outfits, but perhaps that is part of your vision. Forget I said anything about that. Andy stared at the screen for a few seconds, then started tapping a key watching the pictures of them flicker by. Damn, you're right. I should have had at least one more outfit to work with, maybe a few. 
I, um, Harry could feel his face heating up and wondered if the makeup hid the embarrassment he was feeling. Well, I would do this again if you needed to. You know, for your art. For my art, huh? Andy smiled at him. I told you, it's alright if you like this. The world will keep moving on even if you like wearing a skirt. Her voice trailed off as she spoke the last words. What's wrong? Harry worried. Oh, a new idea. It will be great, I'm sure. Andy laughed, then leaned forward and kissed Harry hard on the lips. How would you feel about doing something informal or semi-formal? Oh, Harry swallowed. The idea actually made him excited to think about, but he still wasn't ready to appear enthusiastic. Well, sure, if you need me to. I didn't think you had anything else here. Well, I don't. Andy bit her lip. We'll need to go look for something. We? Harry felt his stomach flip. You mean go out in public? Yes. She sat up straighter, took both her hands in hers. Look, I wouldn't subject you to this if I thought there could be any problems, but you look great. Looking at those pictures we took I would be hard-pressed to say one of the girls in the picture was really a guy. I know I am pushing you, but right now you are feeling really good about how you look, and you should. I'm afraid you might go home and start thinking about it and letting old hang-ups get in the way. I think it is important to capture this while you are still enjoying it. Old hang-ups? Harry frowned. That feels like oversimplification to me. Whatever you want to call it I am afraid you'll back out. Andy looked into Harry's eyes. Please. I believe in this even more than the original idea. Harry looked down at his lap. He lifted the hem of his skirt and fiddled with it between the long nails on his fingers. He smoothed his skirt back down on his legs, looked back at Andy and slowly shook his head. I don't know why I am agreeing to this. Yes. Andy cried and leapt from her chair wrapping her arms around Harry's neck. They lost their balance and tumbled to the floor. Harry felt his skirt go askew and instinctively reached to pull it back down. Instead, he grabbed a handful of Andy's butt cheek. Oops, sorry. He reached up and pulled her skirt back down before groping for his own. Andy laughed. It's fine, she kissed him, matter of fact, if you like and can, I'd like you to spend the night here tonight. She rolled to the side and slid her hand up his leg, over the front of his panty to his skirt and pulled it back down, all while staring in his eyes. Um, yeah, I'd like that, he stammered. A lot. I could tell, Andy grinned. Come on, maybe we can still catch enough light to do the shoot today. They both moved around getting back to their feet, Harry felt he wasn't being too graceful about it but didn't feel he accomplished it. But at least he was back on his feet and his skirt was back in place. Andy came back with car keys in hand and purse over her shoulder. I'll drive if you don't mind. I'm used to doing it in heels, and I would hate for you to have to provide your license if we got pulled over. Harry nodded. Good plan. He followed her out to the car and opened the passenger door. He pictured getting in different ways and finally decided to hold his skirt, sit in the seat, then, keeping his knees together, swing his legs inside. You do behave awfully well as a girl, Andy giggled. Actually, that will make this day a lot easier. Just relax and keep doing what you're doing. I figure we can hit up some second-hand stores, Salvation Army, places like that. Hopefully we can find what we need, I can't afford to be spending a thousand dollars on dresses. I guess I should have given you my wallet, Harry answered as he watched the scenery slide past. I could have helped out. But I agree, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this either. Andy found the first place and they went inside. Harry was nervous and kept checking his skirt to make sure it was hanging right. Relax, Andy whispered. You look great. They found a small section of dresses and looked them over. After a few minutes, they decided there wasn't anything there that would satisfy their needs. They left and moved on. The fourth stop proved to be a treasure trove. Harry found a lacy back dress over a green liner, short with a full skirt. Andy found a similar one with white lace over red. The prices were perfect for their needs as well. 
I think these dresses will require a little change in our lingerie, Andy pointed out. It is one thing to show a bra under a sheer blouse, but I think it tacky to have bra straps showing under lace. We need strapless bras. Since we didn't spend much on the dresses, they'll still fit the budget. She drove off to a nearby Target, they went in and found the items and checked out. I wonder what people think when they see us walking around dressed like this, Harry posed when back in the car. I mean, I've gotten past the idea that everyone who looks at us wonders if I might be a guy in drag, but we aren't exactly dressed like most of the people walking around. That is the advantage of not caring about what other people think of me, Andy told him. I know we look out of place. I don't care. I do care about you. You sound like you are feeling pretty good about how you are looking right now. I do, Harry sighed. And, actually, I am looking forward to putting on the new dress and taking the next set of pictures. Let's get home and change before we lose the light. I don't think we have enough time to go back to the house, Andy explained. I was just trying to think of a place nearby to change. I don't want to go back into Target, and I don't want some filthy gas station bathroom. Harry sat and thought for a few moments. He glanced at the clock and saw it was already after five. He realized he was getting hungry too, the salad at lunch hadn't stayed with him too long. What about a restaurant? I'd offer to but dinner if I had money, but I'll pay you back when we get back to your house. Obviously, I mean a good restaurant, not Mickey DS, or something like that. Andy looked at him and smiled, yes, that could work. There is a nice place a few blocks from here, kind of medium-priced steakhouse. You like that idea? Sounds wonderful, Harry nodded. I think you should do all the ordering though. So far, I haven't had to talk to anyone yet today and I am not certain I want to try yet. I can live with that. Andy pulled out of the parking lot. And dinner is still on me, we are still well within budget on this project. They walked into the restaurant, Andy went to the hostess and asked for a table. When told it would be about a 30-minute wait she asked if it would be alright if they changed clothes in the bathroom. The hostess nodded and Harry went back to the car and got their bags. They marched into the bathroom together, Harry trying to pretend going into the ladies' room was a normal thing. They stepped into adjoining stalls. Harry pulled the strapless bra from a bag and hung it on the hook on the door. He unzipped his skirt, slipped it off and carefully folded it and placed it in the bag. His blouse soon followed as well as his bra once he figured out how to take it off. He took the strapless bra and slipped it on. No hooks or catches, it was like a large band. He figured out the front and slipped the breast forms into it. He pulled his new dress off its hanger from another bag and pulled it on. He tried to zip it up but couldn't get the zipper all the way up. How you doing in there? Andy called. Just trying to get zipped up, he answered. I need help. He heard the other stall door swing open. We can help each other. Harry came out, again stunned by how beautiful Andy looked to him. She gathered her long black hair and pulled it over her shoulder while turning to expose the gaping back of the dress. He reached down and, after figuring out how to grip the zipper without breaking his long nails, zipped up her dress. Following her lead, he gathered his hair and turned to let her zip up his dress. You look really fabulous, Andy told him. Your makeup is holding up really well too. Glad it isn't too warm out today. So, let's have some dinner and then we'll find a place for the pictures I want. Harry took the bags with the discarded clothes back to the car and when he got back into the restaurant found their table was ready for them. They sat and Harry whispered to her what he wanted, and Andy ordered when the waiter arrived. I like the way this dress feels, Harry confessed. The green thing underneath feels really nice against my skin, it is a little longer than the skirt was, which makes me a bit more comfortable here. And I like the feel of the lace too. I'm glad. Andy smiled at him. I like mine too. I don't really think in detail about why I like a dress but listening to you makes me think about it more. Harry ate dinner while paying attention to every little thing he was feeling while he did it. The bras he moved, the occasional breeze that tickled his legs, the lacy sleeves. He also watched Andy, how she moved, behaved. 
Also, he watched the pretty young hostess as she seated people around them. She was in a short black dress, no hose, and what looked like comfortable low heels. She heard one of the other girls call her Jessie. Once they finished eating Andy was ready to get going. I don't know how many different shots I am going to want to get, she explained as they walked to the car, so we might be rushing around some. I think we'll head toward the park. There is a busy intersection there that I want to check out. You want a lot of people and cars around? Harry squeaked. You aren't still nervous, are you? Andy replied. You just spent an hour in a crowded restaurant with several guys openly ogling you. You can probably imagine what they were thinking. I just figured they were looking at you, he sighed. And I don't want to think about what they were thinking about you or me. Trust me, she nodded, they were checking us both out. And I'll not think about it either. Andy found a place to park, and then they had to walk through the park to get to the corner she had in mind. Harry carried the tripod while Andy handled the camera, occasionally pausing to look at possible backgrounds through the lens. They got to the corner, traffic in all directions waiting for the green that would send them on their way. People on the corners waiting for the signal to flash walk, okay? I think we have enough room to do this. Set the tripod up here. Andy pointed. Harry set it up and waited while she got the camera mounted and set where she wanted. Go stand there. She indicated a spot close to where people were waiting at the corner. Come a step closer, I want people to walk behind us. She came from behind the camera and stood next to Harry. When I say, I want you to stand as still as you can. I'm going for a long exposure so the people and cars in the background show up blurry, but we should be clear if we don't move. Put your hand on your dress like this, hopefully it won't move too much. When the light changed and people started moving, she called out, hold still and pressed a button on a remote. After a few seconds she let them move again and went and checked the result. They repeated the process several more times until Andy decided she had enough to work with. Okay, new position. Andy was all business once again. I want you to stand facing the people coming from across the street. I will stand facing you. We are going to have our arms up and if our dresses blow around a bit and blur, I think that will really look amazing. Ready? Harry nodded. Andy took her spot, and both raised their arms like they were tossing something in the air between them. Hold, Andy called as people started moving again and they stood as still as they could. Harry could feel his dress moving just a bit as people rushed by in cars, trucks and buses sped through the intersection. Done, Andy called. They lowered their arms, Harry quickly checked his dress to be sure all was still in place. Oh, I think this is terrific. Andy gushed. It will look fabulous blown up. Along with the other shots, maybe a couple more as we walk back to the car. You still good? I don't think you need to worry about me, Harry answered. With everything that we've done today, culminating with this here as the world walked by, I am pretty much ready for anything more you want to do. Really, okay. Andy took the camera off the tripod. Here's an idea, we go to the pond in the park, take off our dresses and lay them side by side on the ground just out of the water, then we stand just at the water's edge. We can do one facing the camera, one away. Andy laughed, I'm kidding. You did say anything, but I think I might have actually seen you turn green. Thank God, Harry gasped. His hands were shaking a bit as he picked up the tripod. It does give me a bit of an idea, though, Andy mused. Let's go to the pond. Harry shuddered as he followed her through the park. Andy had Harry set up the tripod facing the lake. She set the camera and walked to the edge of the water. Okay, there isn't anyone around, so I want us to face the water, lift your dress like you are afraid of it getting wet. Hold it high enough that your panty shows, I am going to do the same. This is going to be a regular shot so we can do it quick. Are you really okay now? She asked. Harry looked around. Yeah, let's do it. Lift, she instructed. Harry pulled his dress up and felt more cool air flow around the bare skin above his stockings. Then dropped his dress when Andy called done. He took another quick look around and still saw nobody. I don't know that I'll use that one, Andy grinned. I might just want that one for myself, 
Harry gaped at her. She laughed. Come on, let's get back to my place. Andy took the camera again. I think we've done all we can do today. They walked back to her car and Andy drove them back to her bungalow. Once inside, Andy went right to work. Harry walked around looking at her various projects in states of completeness. Maybe this project wouldn't see the light of day either. He gathered his dress and sat on the couch watching Andy become engrossed in her work, oblivious to anything else. He thought perhaps he should go change clothes, back into his own things and was surprised to find he really didn't want to. Then he remembered the outfits they were wearing earlier were still in the trunk of the car. He found Andy's keys and went outside to retrieve them. When he got back inside, he found nothing had changed. Andy hadn't even noticed he left. He wandered around more, then ventured out into the backyard to see what else he could look at. The evening air felt nice. Eventually, he turned back toward the house and found Andy standing in the doorway. She wasn't in her dress any longer, she had on a jersey that reached to her upper thigh. Sorry, she called as he approached. Sometimes I get so wrapped up I forget everything else. That is why I don't have any relationships that last more than a few weeks. That isn't very understanding of them, Harry answered. If I had realized how things were going to go, I'd have brought a book to read while you worked. You also could have chosen to change clothes, she pointed out. But instead, you are still walking around in that sexy little dress. She wrapped her arms around his neck. Are you ready to get out of it now? I did invite you to spend the night. For you? Harry put his arms around her waist. I got into it, I'd be happy to get out of it. They kissed and went back inside to the bedroom. Andy helped him out of his dress and clean off the makeup. He stripped off the bra, stocking and garter. He led Andy to the bed. This ought to be interesting, Andy purred. I've never been with someone with this packaging before. She ran her fingers over the panties he still wore. Harry turned out the light. Hannah, Andy called. What do you think? Hannah looked around the room they were in. It was filled with art all produced by Andy. She had her own show going on that night. The main feature of the show was the photography that they did together eight months earlier. That day he had just been Harry in a dress for her art, but it became more than that. After spending that night together, they had a long talk before getting out of bed. Andy was taken with the fact that Harry had been so willing to help her, and even more that he respected her need to be able to work without interruption or feeling abandoned. Harry also opened up telling her that his experience that day made him want to explore more of what he had done. He hoped she would help him again even if it didn't involve her art. After talking the rest of that day, they created Hannah. Tonight, Hannah wore a floor-length gown with a slit up the left leg, short sleeves, and a high neck. His blonde hair was arranged in soft curls that fell about his shoulders. He wore two large hoop earrings in his pierced ears. Andy was also in a floor-length gown. Hers was strapless, form-fitting and sparkled in the light. She hugged Hannah. I think it is time to start worrying about if anyone is going to show up. If they don't, Hannah started, then they will have missed out on something very special. But don't even think about that because there will be plenty of people here, and I will bet there will be quite a few pieces sold as well. If people see it, I will be satisfied, Andy sighed. I don't want to get my hopes up too high. This is as much for you as anything. You kept me inspired to finish things that were sitting around. And you've become my best friend and lover. It takes two to make things work, Hannah squeezed. I love you. But, let's go tell them to open the doors or nobody else will get to see any of this. For the official show Andy decided to name the photographs just reflections not wanting people to question where the deception might lie. Okay, she told the doorman, let's open the door. A half dozen people came in and started touring the gallery, eating the little snacks and drinking wine. It wasn't until an hour later that the real crowd started showing up. I wish the fashionably late crowd had some idea of how stressful it is on the artist, Andy moaned. Hannah laughed. The room was filled with folks from the well-to-do crowd. Some wandered about barely glancing at the items, just wanting to be seen at the gathering. 
Others took a real interest in everything on display. Hannah saw two women standing in front of one of the pictures they took on the street corner. It was blown up to four feet by three feet, they were facing each other, holding hands, clear figures. Blurs of vehicles and people, unrecognizable, filled in the background ahead of the buildings in the background. Andy had titled it Time Doesn't Stand Still. Hannah moved closer to see if he could overhear what they might be saying about it. Hi. One lady turned. I believe you are one of the ladies in this picture. Yes, I confess, I am, Hannah answered in a carefully modulated voice. I also confess, I was trying to eavesdrop to see what you thought of it. We love it, she answered. I am actually thinking of purchasing this one. I think I would like it in my office. We are in real estate together. I'm Kate, this is Joan. Oh, yes, Hannah exclaimed. I remember seeing a billboard with your faces on it some time back. You had just started your own agency, I think. It was quite a story back then. Yes, it was, Joan answered. It was a little bit of a risk since I had no experience, but Kate was an amazing teacher. She saw something in me that I didn't believe I had. Actually, she showed me something of herself that led me to believe in her, Kate answered. Andy came up and joined the three of them. Ah, the other lady in the photo, Kate greeted her. Oh, I'm sorry, Hannah started. I am Hannah. Andy, this is Kate, and this is Joan. They were just saying they might be interested in buying this piece. And ladies, this is Andy. The talent behind all you see here tonight. It is a pleasure to meet you. Kate reached out and shook Andy's hand. First, I want to say I like everything I have seen here tonight, and this piece here absolutely captivates me. While I love it for its content, it just so happens that the dress Hannah is wearing in this photo looks like the same dress Joan was wearing the first night we met. We were at an art show that night and let's just say that events transpired to make it a memorable evening and brought us together. That is amazing, Andy told her. This shoot actually brought Hannah and I together in a way that I never could have imagined. Well, I think we need this piece. Joan nodded. Seven thousand dollars? Will you deliver it? Absolutely. Andy gushed. Thank you so much. Happy to do it, Kate answered. It will be a great connection for us. And now, for us to you. Thank you for bringing your art to us. Kate and Joan walked off to complete their purchase. Andy turned to Hannah. Wow. I sold a piece. Can you believe it? Of course, I can, Hannah told her. And I'm sure it won't be the only one sold tonight. Besides, that isn't the first piece you've ever sold. No, but it is the most expensive one I've ever sold, she explained, and also the first piece from my first official showing. One of the gallery workers walked up and stuck a sold label over the price beside the photo then turned and added another to a sculpture on a pedestal nearby. Looks like another sale. Hannah pointed. You know, there is a photo that isn't here that might have sold pretty quickly. I know which one you are talking about, and I think it will stay right on our bedroom wall. Andy pretended to huff. I like looking at your but in those sexy black panties. Not to mention that bear but of yours right next to it, Hannah laughed. You can hardly tell you have a thing on. We might have scared those ducks in the pond. I don't hear any complaints. Andy started leading them off to another part of the gallery. And I don't think you ever will.